Hey guys, welcome back to my sewing channel and to my uh, wild hair. It's been up all day and I tried to take it down to look pretty for you guys, but it, um, it didn't work. But anyways, um, today's video is a short, quick tutorial on how I take an image from the internet and I get it onto my brother's scan and cut to cut. So I cut out this little raven guy here. Here you go. And this is going to go onto a bifold wallet that I'm going to make. It'll be on the back. So yeah, I just thought that I get a lot of questions about the scan and cut and I am by mo by no means at all a pro. Um, but I just have kind of picked up a couple little tips and tricks here and there. And so I figured I would share them with you. And so in the video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I got the picture off the internet and how I uploaded it into canvas which is brother's online um, work area. And then I got it from Canvas online to my machine. And then kind of some of the settings and things like that. So I hope that you enjoy. Um, give me a thumbs up if you like it. And if you don't, um, I'm sorry, please tell me why. It's always interesting when people give you thumbs down and then you're like, well, who did that? What did I do wrong? What didn't they like about it? So it would be helpful if in the comments, if you don't like something, let me know. Um, so then I can work on it or I can address it next time. But anyways, so be sure to like, subscribe, share. Please share this. Help me get my word out too. Um, and yeah, enjoy. So to get started on finding an image online, what you're going to do is open up a new window and type in what you want. And then what I have found works best um, for a brother scan and cut machine is typing in silhouette whenever I'm looking for an image. So if you type in silhouette, you see that they're all blacked out images, which this is a lot easier to manipulate when you're trying to turn it into an SVG to work on the scan and cut machine. You can also search for Raven vector image. Vector images are scalable, which is essentially what an SVG is. SVG stands for scalable vector uh, graphic, I think, but yes. Yeah, so the scan and cut, either you can trace a JPEG that you download off the internet, or you can just go ahead and get a vector image, which will be an SVG, and that will go straight into the uh, brother scan and cut, no problem. So for the purposes of this video, I am going to be using a Raven, which is why I typed that in. Um, a couple other things to point out is, depending on the size of what you're cutting out, trying to cut out little details like claws and little feathers, things like this, that's gonna be rather challenging. So when I'm looking for an image, I'm looking for something easier, which that with the feathers would be hard, but. So I have already found the image that I want to use, and it's a JPEG, and it was a free photo that I got on the internet. So you wanna be careful with that, with copyright. So I downloaded the free image, and it was a silhouette. So I'm just going to find it. I have it on my desktop here. Here, I guess I should back up. So the way that, because it's a JPEG, I'm going to click this little tracing button here, this one right here. If you had an SVG or a vector image, you would just click straight on SVG. But I'm gonna click on this tracing button. And then you just click down here, start enhance tracing. And then I'm gonna choose my file. And blah, 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 it's gonna just tell me directions. But, so you can see the image that I chose is very, very simple. It's a raven, but it's not detailed at all. So in order to make the canvas program trace out this JPEG to make it an image that the brother scan and cut can read, you want to just alienate what you want to pick up. So this image is really easy because there's no background to it. So I'm just going to move all of my little red dots in closer here and press preview and you'll see that bright blue outline, that's the image that it traced for me. So I press next. And I'm just gonna click through until it puts it on. It's gonna ask me if I want to paste the selected image onto my work area, which is going to be, it's going to essentially be the cutting mat, but just on the uh, computer. 
Um, once you do this, you cannot edit the SVG file at all, or you can't edit the original image. So here we go. I've got mine, and I'm zooming in here. And so here it is. This is now the vector image that it traced, and right now it has the background in it. The actual, the, the JPEG photo is laid in behind it, but that won't actually cut out. So if you click on it and move it, you'll see that it separates from that background. So this background will not cut out. It's going to be this heavy dark outline. So now what I am planning on doing is I need to place this vector image on the cutting mat, which here I'll zoom out so that you can see the cutting mat. So this is what your brother's scan and cut cutting mat looks like. This out here has all the inches and yada yada. So I need to lay this vector image on the mat where I want it to cut out of my material. And so for this video, what I'm doing is I'm cutting a raven out of one main panel of a bifold wallet. So I need to place this within the width of my bifold panel. I don't want to deal with this um, background image here because I don't, sorry, let me get back to it. I don't want to confuse myself any farther than when I'm trying to do the math. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save and you save by pressing this arrow down button. And so it's saving the project is complete. And then I'm going to press this very first one. It looks like a grid and that's going to give me a brand new blank workspace. So to reload that Raven that I just created, I'm going to go to my projects and then click on the little Raven and there you can see it popped up. So now I'm just going to zoom in and here it is. So I know that the dimensions of my outside wallet, that the middle of it is going to be, let's see. So the middle fold of my completed wallet is going to be right around four. And I kind of think I want to be a little bit stylistic on it. So I'm going to do the raven in the bottom corner. And I don't care if it's on the front or the backs. I think on the back might be actually kind of cooler because it would be more subtle. So I'm going to put it closer to this area. So... You have to, whenever you're placing your images, you have to place it inside these bleed lines. Um, otherwise, otherwise, it's going to give you an error message. So whenever you're playing around and messing with your brother's skin and cut, you just make sure that whatever your image is, it's inside these bleed lines. But whenever you're laying your material on your actual mat, your material is going to go past that bleed line, just so you know. So I'm going to put mine... So that's 0.25. I'm going to put it in half an inch. I want it up from the bottom a half an inch. I'm going to angle the camera or the um, whatever this thing is, this computer, so that I can actually see what I'm doing real quick. Yeah, that's all right. Okay. So I have the one that I have placed. I'm going to delete that other one. I don't really know why that one was there, so sorry about that. Um, I'm definitely not a pro at this. I'm just sharing the little bit of knowledge that I have gained just with um, playing around with this program. So next, what you do, once you have it placed where you want it to be placed, you're going to have your scan and cut. You can see mine is on back here. You want to have it on and ready to go. And I'm going to press this download button over here on the computer. And it's going to ask me if I want to download it to my computer and save it here or if I just want to send it directly to my Scan and Cut. And I'm going to just send it directly over to my Scan and Cut machine. So it says now that it's ready. All right, so I'm going to move this out of the way. Don't mind this dog toy. It's my dog's favorite toy and I'm trying to keep it safe because we have doggy friends over. Oh, gosh. So let's make sure we can see this. So in order to get the image that has now been transferred from the computer onto here, onto your Scan and Cut, you press Pattern, and then this button right here looks like a cloud, and then the Scan and Cut. So you click that. Okay. 
And then through the magic of the internet, there it is. I don't know if you can see it because it's very, very, very little on the screen. But if you can tell, there's the raven there on the screen. So now in order to tell my machine that that is what I want to cut, I press OK and then cut. And then what I need to do now is load my material onto my mat. So I am going to um, just rearrange a little bit here and I'll be right back. All right, so now I need to load my material, which is my pre-cut bifold wallet um, exterior panel. And I always use, let's see, I always use a little bit of basting spray and I don't spray the whole thing. I just spray where the cut is going to happen. And so I lined it up around the top and the side edges here. And so now in theory, if I laid it out correctly, this raven should be cut out from this area right here. So we are about to find out. So what I'm gonna do is, load my mat. And so let me move you guys closer so that you can see. So just, again, just very basics. I'm just showing you everything. Cause when I first got this thing, I had no idea how to use it. And I was so intimidated, but it's just trial and error. You gotta play around. But so to load your mat, Sorry, I've also never like filmed this type of stuff, so I don't really know the good layouts for my cam camera yet. But so to load to, to load the mat, you'll see that there are these boundary edges right here, and you want to load your mat right there. You line it up in there and hold it straight, and then you press this top button here. Sometimes it needs a little boost to get in. There we go. So now the mat is loaded. And I have on the screen that it's ready to cut. And then a couple little things about cutting cork. Uh, the reason that I use the basting spray is because the, the backing on the cork, I mean, you can see it on my mat. It, it takes away the tackiness pretty quickly. I know that Brother does have like the super extra tacky stuff um, that you can lay on top of your mat. So if you want to go that route, you can. Um, but like I said, I always use basting spray. I have heard of people that lay the cork face down. I always do the backing down just because then that way I don't have to worry about um, mirroring my image and, you know, taking other, yeah, all of that stuff into account. So the blade that I'm using is just the regular blade that they sent me. And when I first started cutting cork, I could cut it all the way over here on like four. If I were to cut it at an eight when I first with, if the, with a new blade, it would cut all the way through this mat. And I know that because I did it. Um, but because I, I try to be as sustainable as possible and in such a throwaway world, um, as soon as this got dull, people would just chuck it and get a new one. But I just um, make the blade depth deeper. So that's what I do. So right now I'm rocking at a, between an eight and a nine, depending on the cork. I find that the aqua cork is a little bit fuzzier for some reason, so I usually do closer to an eight and a half. We'll do an eight actually, just to see, just to test. So the way that you load and unload this, this little carriage over here, if the blade is not in there, it's just gonna kind of bounce around. So once you get your blade depth where you want it to, you push it down with the brother label facing out and then just snap that into place. So we are ready to go. I am going to press start. So in order to make it start cutting, again, you have cut is highlighted in blue and I'm gonna press start. Sometimes if I get super nervous, I will keep my hand on the cord just to make sure that it doesn't really shift, but the basting spray does that. So it's more so just for me. All right, so now to, when it says that it's done, it says finish, so you just press OK. And then to offload the mat, you have to press this top button here. Let's get this bad boy out of the way. And then I'm just going to peel this off. And then there we go. We have one little tiny raven. And here is the other. So for a lot of things, I will save my cuttings. Um, I made one of my moon phase bags the other day, and you know, I had, so I have all my moon phases. And then you can do, instead of reverse applique, then you can do applique with those pieces. So, 
Now, the next thing that I would do, or like whenever I start to sew with this, what I'm gonna do is inlay a scrap of cork behind, and then I'm gonna applique all around, excuse me, all around that to make sure that there's a backing. Otherwise, when I lay my two outers together, it'll just show through the black cork, which, or it, not the black cork, but the black backing, which I'm gonna actually, I'm just gonna ask my customer what they want, because they might want a contrasting color, you know, like if I had it. That's one of my labels, so that's really bad. But you know, if it was natural cork, that would really pop. So I'm just gonna email my customer and ask her what she wants. And so let's see. Once I'm done making my wallet, this is how it'll fold, and then the raven will be back there. So I think that that is pretty darn cute. All right, kids, I hope that you enjoyed that quick video. Um, let me know if you have any questions, if there's anything specific about the scanning cut that I can try to help you with. Um, next time I can try to go over like how to resize things and how to do more on the scanning cut itself rather than focusing on using canvas to the scanning cut. So yeah, let me know what you think. Let me know what you need. I will meet you where I can. Again, not a pro. Not a pro at anything. It's just a, what's, what's the jack of all, master of none? I feel like I fit into that pretty well. Anyways, um, I will link you to my free checkbook tutorial at somewhere over here probably since this is where my head isn't. And then the little circle that has the narwhal in it is, is the subscribe button. So if you like this video, or even if you didn't and you want to give me another chance, hit the subscribe button. Be sure to uh, share and comment, blah, 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 blah. Anyways, I got a pair of new roller skates and I'm going to go skate.